Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. Uh, we're looking at a series of sermons called um, On Fire, Youth on Fire. And I hope these sermons will be a blessing. Uh, some of you have heard these sermons before. They were prepared for people in India. And uh, I wasn't able to go, but I was uh, asked to go. And I prepared these sermons uh, for the Indian people. And um, so I hope that these sermons are going to be a bless blessing to you if you're a young person, especially. Uh, and there's about there's a number of these sermons, and I just hope that they're an encouragement to you. So let's come before the Lord, dear Lord. We just thank you for this day and for your love and your grace. And Father, I pray for all who hear this series of sermons that, Father, I pray for your Holy Spirit that you would seal your word to our hearts. And I pray that all of us would either come to be saved and come to know you, or come to be encouraged and refreshed and strengthened. But Father, I pray for the Holy Spirit to be in this sermon. And I pray, Father, that you will be glorified, that people would be edified, and people will be fed your word today. I ask this Lord in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to turn to Ephesians chapter 2. I scratch my nose It's because I, I, got, I get an itchy nose when I'm on camera. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2 and we'll be reading at verse 1 to 10. So if you could turn to the Word of God, it's always good, excuse me, to have a Bible and to check what the preacher says because if the preacher says something that's not right, you can spot it because you've looked at the Word of God. So Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 10. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children as wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, <coughs> which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, <coughs> that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself it is the gift of God, not of works lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in there. <coughs> so we pray, we prayed, and we pray again, Lord, we just pray that the meditations that we have today would be for your glory and honour, and we pray that your word would feed us today, and we pray for the help and the abiding power and presence of thy Holy Spirit, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Amen. Not so long ago, um, a few months ago, my mother came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as her Lord and Saviour and was baptised. She was known throughout the country as, or was, one of the main clairvoyants in our country in the United Kingdom. But she became a born again Christian. But if you wanted to have your palm read, by my mother when she was a, a clairvoyant you would have had to pay twenty pounds but if you want to know God it costs you free Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves it is the gift of God salvation is a gift 
If I give you a Christmas present, it's up to you to take the present and to open it. And God has given you a gift, and the gift is this, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God gave everything that he could, and that was his Son, Jesus Christ, for you and for me. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. He came and lived in this world. He lived a perfect life. He allowed himself to be arrested, to be mocked, to be whipped. He allowed himself to be crucified on a cross. But he was being crucified for you. He was being a punishment for your sin. Instead of you getting the judgment of God upon you, Christ took your judgment for your sin. And there's a hymn that says, How willing was Jesus to die, that we rebel sinners might live. The life they could not take away, how ready was Jesus to give. They pierced through his hands and his feet, his body he freely resigned. The pains of his flesh were so great, but greater the pangs of his mind. And when Christ was on the cross, he was in agony and taking your judgment for your sin. It was a gift, a gift from God the Father. And it's up to you to consider that gift, to take that gift and to open that gift. So are you willing to open your heart today? Are you spiritually dead? Imagine you were dead and you were lying on a hospital bed and outside is a park and the kids are playing in the park and the music's playing, there's a band, a brass band playing, guide me O thou great Jehovah outside in the park and it's a beautiful sunny day. And there's a butterfly flying in the sky, a red emerald butterfly. And there's little children playing on their bikes, and some on swings. And someone is eating a ham sandwich on a bench, an old man with a cap. It's a glorious sunny day. But you're dead on the hospital bed. There's a window. And if you was alive, you could see through the window, you could see... That lovely sunny day, that old man eating his sandwich, you, you could see the children playing and you could see the brass, you could hear the brass band playing and the smell of the summer air and the breeze, if you was alive, but you're dead. And as you're dead and you're lying on the hospital bed, you can't hear the brass band, you can't hear the children playing. You can't smell the summer air. You can't feel the summer air. You can't see the man eating his sandwich because you're dead. And that's why you don't know God. That's why with all your intellectual arguments you do not know God because you're dead, spiritually dead. Ephesians 1.1 1, 1, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. That's what the Word of God says. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. So with Albert Barnes says, So with sinners in regard to the spiritual and eternal world, he sees no beauty in religion. He hears not the call of God. He is unaffected by the dying of the Savior, and he has no interest in eternal realities. You don't, lo you don't find the Christian faith interesting or relevant because you're spiritually dead. Isaiah 9, 2, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Christ came into the world as the light. And we are dead, we cannot see the light in Christ. James chapter 1 15 then after desire is conceived to give birth to sin and sin 
when it's fulfilled grown for its full grown gives birth gives birth to death and because we're dead in sin because we're blind to God we do not live for God we live for sin and for and, and rebelling against God and going against God you have heard that it was said do not commit adultery but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with wherein in his heart if your right eye causes you to sin gorge it out and throw it away it is better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to be thrown into hell and if your right hand causes you to sin cut it off and throw it away it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell Matthew 5 verse 27 to 30 I just check that I just check it because I can't read my handwriting there yeah that's okay that's correct and our Lord here when he's saying if, if you're you know if he says he says you heard that it was said do not commit adultery but I tell you that anyone looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery within her within his heart you're dead spiritually and you're dead and one way of knowing you're dead is how your heart thinks what is your heart set upon what is it you desire most of all in your heart is it sex above God what is it that it is your heart's desire today that will show you whether you are alive or dead spiritually there was an American football coach and he wanted his footballers to really do well at football and be dedicated so it was uh, near the country this football stadium and near the countryside and he had all his footballers in in the changing rooms and he got someone with a rattlesnake in a bag and he got the person to throw a rattlesnake out of the bag into the changing rooms and everybody in the changing rooms got up and ran like the clappers out of the changing rooms and the American coach said just as you have fleed, fled from that rattlesnake so you should flee from drugs and because we are spiritually dead we need to hear this we need to flee from sin flee from those things that pull us down because they are like rattlesnakes they will destroy our lives for the wages of sin is death it brings death you see if we walk in the ways of ourselves but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord Romans chapter 6 23 the wages of sin is death you lie it'll bring death you steal it'll bring death you commit adultery it'll bring death you be full of pride it'll bring death you think you're better than everybody else it'll bring death sin brings death but the gift of God brings eternal life the gift of Christ will bring you life what we sow we reap I, I had a friend of mine and he used to get out and go get on get drunk and he was on drugs and things and the poor man came back one night after being drunk and he smashed the window of the front door open and he opened the door because he had no key and he, he accident, accidentally slit his wrist and in the morning they found him dead what a tragedy 
because he came home drunk and if we walk in the way of sin it will bring death in our life some of you young people you're, you're, you're running for glamour you want a fast car you want a fast job a fantastic job you want to go to the city and you want to be a big time person uh, you want, a, fan, you want a, a, a model wife or a model husband and you, you want to get into the rat race in, in, in the big city and, and, and make a name for yourself. And then you go to the big city and you get involved in drink and drugs and sex and you get pulled down. The wages of sin is death. He says, for you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do living in debauchery lust and drunkenness orgies and carousing and detestable idolatry they think it's strange that you do not plunge with him into the same to that with them into the same flood of dissipation as they heap abuse on you but they will have to give an account to him who is really ready to give to give to judge the living and the dead and those in the big city young people who are walking in the ways of sin who are who are taking young people with them in their coach loads into sexual immorality these are blind people leaders of the blind and their end is destruction for we are going to have to live for eternity and we're going to have to give an account so don't go into the big city and follow these people. Follow Christ. Are you going to wake up? Are you going to see that you're spiritually dead? Are you going to see that you need God? That's what you need to fill your heart with as a young person. Number two, are you controlled by Satan? I saw a documentary once with a bumblebee, uh, with a, a beetle. I believe big black beetle about that big and the scientists have put a little computer chip in the brain of the the big beetle and they could make the beetle fly this way or that way and you saw this black beetle fly this way or that way and it was controlled by a computer sending electrical impulses to the brain That beetle didn't know it was being controlled by those scientists. Today, people don't realize that they're being controlled by Satan. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, Ephesians 2, 2. We're working in, in, in those who are disobedient. But there is a ruler of the air and his name is Satan. And there are demons as well. And these demons and Satan want to do one thing. They, they have a system that is anti-Christ, opposed to Jesus Christ. And these demons and, and, and Satan want you to mix religions and say all religions are the same. It's okay to be a Hindu and a Muslim together. We can all get, we can all believe all this, mix it all up. I can have a bit of Hinduism, a bit of Islam, a bit of Buddhism and put it all together and make a nice big religious soup. But he says, who does what is sinful is of the devil. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. 1 John 3, 8. And the reason why you go for new age ideas, trendy religious ideas, or superstitious religious ideas, is because you're controlled by the devil. The devil has blinded your mind. And you're not listening to the word of God and finding the truth and realizing that the devil has been defeated. 
And there are many today, there are many young people actually who are into devil worship. You need to know that the devil has been defeated. It says the God, it says the God of this age has blinded the unbelievers. The God, the devil, has blinded people so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is in the image of God. 2, Cor 2, Chronicle, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. The devil has blinded people so that they cannot see the kingdom of God, so that they cannot see the word of God. And you're being affected by the devil. I can prove to you that you're being affected by the devil. You take the Bible. You start to read the Bible and learn from the Bible and you'll feel a power to try and stop you. The Satan will try and stop you from reading the Bible and studying it with an open heart. And he will come against you and you will know there is a devil. There is a devil, folks. And he is blinding you from, from the truth. If I... If someone tied a scarf round your eyes and you got this scarf and I you can't see but I take the scarf off and you can see the sun you've got a you've got a something round your eyes the devil has put something round your eyes and you can't see you can't see Jesus you can't see the truth and you need to say no I, I want to see Get off me, devil. I don't want to know what you've got to say. I want to know what God has to say. You've got to be willing to be open. And allow God to open your eyes. And allow God to teach you his word. It's only by his power that you can understand the word of God. And Satan has been defeated. And so many young people today, I go see many young people today and they tell me they believe in Satan and they worship Satan and yet the Bible condemns Satan Revelation 20 verse 20 sorry Revelation verse 10 and I fell at his feet to worship him but he said to me sorry Revelation 20 verse 10 the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan has been defeated, folks. Is anybody here today who is a Satan lover and a Satan worshipper? You need to repent. You need to turn away. You need to look to Jesus Christ and realize that Satan has been defeated number three are you under the wrath of God in the time of Pompeii when the mountain blew up and it was a volcanic eruption the whole ash covered the Roman town and covered it all and destroyed everybody there is a destruction of God God is a God of wrath as well as a God of love In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 it says all of uh, all of us lived among them at one time gratifying the cravings of the sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts like the rest we were by nature objects of wrath by nature objects of wrath we were gratifying our sinful nature doing the sexual immorality we were enjoying it and God saw it and he was holy and he hated it and he's going to bring his wrath upon it and in Pompeii if you go to the ruins of Pompeii nearly every house there's some sexual perverted picture that was painted there by those ancient people and God brought wrath and destruction to those ancient people and it because of their sexual immorality and sin 
Francis Sch Schaeffer, a great Christian apologist, said, There is no real preaching of the Christian gospel except in the light of the fact that man is under the wrath of God. Deuteronomy 28.28 28, The Lord will afflict you with madness, blindness and confusion of mind. If you walk in the way of sin there is a reckoning and you will be judged. And fierce will that be judgment. Fierce will that judgment be. I in turn will laugh at your disaster. I will mock when calamity overtakes. Proverbs 127. You might mock and you might laugh. You might say, ha ha, Jay, that's just old time gospel preaching, but you won't be laughing. I kid you not, you will not be laughing. If you walk your way, God will bring judgment upon you. As sure as the sun comes up and the moon comes up, so judgment is coming upon you. Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 Surely the day is coming, it will burn like a furnace, all the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And that day is coming, will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty, not a, ro not a root or a branch will be left to them. Malachi 4.1 And the fierce, fierce wrath of God will come. It's fierce. Because he's so holy, he's so pure, and he must have purity in his house. He must have purity. He is absolutely committed to holiness. God is committed to holiness. And he must clean up the world. And if you are not committed to holiness, then he doesn't want you in his world. He only wants the holy people. Who are pure and undefiled and are honouring and glorifying him. And if you say, I don't want to know this gospel. I don't want to know Jesus. Then you're choosing unholiness. And God must burn up with unquenchable fire unholiness. For he is holy. John MacArthur, the gospel message begins with a statement about the wrath of God. Frankly, that is diametrically opposed to most of our evangelistic techniques. Most of our contemporary evangelism purposely avoids the theme. You might say, Jay, I, I don't like you preaching the wrath of God. I'm a faithful preacher of the word of God and that's what the Bible teaches. I can only teach what the Bible says. There are many bishops today who don't preach the word of God. Many pastors don't preach the word of God. And I'm only telling you what the word of God says. If I tell you something and it's not backed by scripture, then you have a right to say, Jay, what you're teaching is wrong. But everything I teach you is from the word of God. I won't teach anything that I can't back up from scripture, from this book, the word of God. And as young people, you need to hear that God is holy and he does judge. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, here it is, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Ephesians 5, 6. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Romans 5, 9. Since we have now been justified by the blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? We are saved from the wrath of, of God by Christ's blood. If if it was it, today, it's been raining a lot in in England, and there are many floods. But imagine rain coming down in great hailstorms, and the coming down. And God's wrath is like that. God is holy and he must judge he's a just God and he must judge you know if, if you saw if you were a, 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 a 
king of a, of, of a nation and you had all the power in that nation and you saw 20 people raping somebody a vi a vi in, in a violent way and you knew about it as a king if you're a king would, would not you be wanting justice wouldn't you want to deal with that un unrighteous, act, unrighteous act wouldn't you want those people as a king to be punished for what they have done God is the same he will be the judge of all the earth and will bring judgment upon this earth everyone will get justice Matthew 25 verse 30 and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth there's going to be judgment Matthew chapter 13 42 and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth and there is a hell God is going to send people to hell 1 Thessalonians 5 3 while people are saying peace and safety destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape people are going to say everything's fine everything's okay but God's going to judge Are you under the wrath of God? If you went home to today and at night you went to bed and you died in your sleep and there was a God are you sure that you would not go to hell? The wrath of God is real and God wants you to trust Him to find peace in his salvation and to scare the wrath to come. The scriptures warn about judgment. Fear God in a, in a right way. Reverence him because he's not to be trifled with. He really isn't to be trifled with young people. Well we come to our last part of this message Are you saved by grace? Imagine someone, uh, a best friend of yours, and for some reason you lose your temper and you hit them in the nose. And you see them again and you hit them in the nose again and you see them again and you hit them in the nose again every time you see them you hit them in the nose and one day you're walking along a beach uh, you're walking al along some cliffs to look at the sea because you can see the sea but you slip and you fall over the cliff and you put your hand on the rock of the cliff and you're just about to stop yourself from going down but this person whose nose you kept hitting sees you comes over to you grabs you and pulls you up and as they pull you up they save you but they fall over to their destruction to the bottom of the cliff every day you whack God on the nose when you say you don't believe in him but you were headed for destruction falling off the cliff of eternity and Jesus came from heaven and he grabbed you by dying on the cross for you and giving his life for you Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions it is by grace you have been saved God is rich in mercy we are children of wrath we are children of the devil we are dead in our sin but God is rich in his mercy he's come to save us God has been extravagant 
in his wonderful love to you today. Ephesians chapter 53, uh, Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5 Surely he took our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we have been healed. We are healed. God has been extravagant in his love. He sent his son Jesus Christ from eternity. He came and lived a perfect life. But he came to do one main thing, and that was to die as a substitute for your sin to die on a cross for your sin. It was prophesied that the Messiah would come and die on the cross. And he was stricken and he was afflicted for your transgressions. He was crushed for your iniquities. The Saviour, who was beautiful and never did anything wrong, was offering his body to be punished for you. Instead of the wrath of God falling upon you, the wrath of God fell upon Christ. Instead of you getting whipped by God, Jesus got whipped by the Roman soldiers. Instead of you going to hell, Jesus went to hell on the cross. Jesus took the judgment of the Father for you. Instead of you going into outer darkness, Jesus on the cross went into out of darkness. As the sin of the whole world was poured upon him, he was in darkness that you and I could never imagine. And all for you. And when he took that wrath, he was doing it because he loved you with an everlasting love. As that old hymn says, all oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. The Saviour coming from eternity to die on a cross for you. Oh, what love from the Saviour. Isaiah 54, verse 7. For a brief moment I abandon you, but with deep compassion I will bring you back. And God is saying to you, I brought my judgment upon you, but I love you and I have not abandoned you. I want you. And God wants you. Psalm 86, 5, you are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. Psalm 86, verse 5, you are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. Psalm 86, verse 5. I was on holiday once in the Isle of Man, and it was a sunny day. And I went down to the beach. And I'll never forget it. It was the most peaceful day you could ever imagine. It was a cool afternoon. It was so warm that the, the sun was out. But it, it had that kind of mellow, relaxation kind of mood. The sky was just pale, peaceful blue. And the sea was pale, peaceful blue. And I remember on that peaceful day I just went into the sea that was so calm and comforting and peaceful and I, I just relaxed in the sea and enjoyed the peace of the sea. The vast sea seemed to be giving me peace and comfort as I relaxed in the sea. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. Psalm 86, 5. And if you come to Jesus Christ and relax in his love, it is like the sea that stretches out before you. His love is vast. His love stretches from all eternity. From all of history, his love is great because his love was at the cross for you and me. That he took your judgment and my judgment. And I can rest in that love of the Son of God who gave himself 
for you and for me as a sacrifice for my sin and your sin. And saved me and saved you from the wrath to come. A divine blood, a holy blood, a blood that knew no wrong, a blood that knew no sin. The Savior's blood died for me. The Savior's blood died for you. And I can rest in it and find peace. Peace through the storm. Peace because I am right with the living God. And I know that God is not angry with me. He is my Father. And you can know that God is not angry with you, but He is your Father as you come in the blood of Christ. Just as I went into the sea and relaxed in the sea, so you need to jump into the blood of Christ and into His arms and relax in the Saviour's arms. Lord, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. Psalm 103 verse 8 The Lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger and abounding in love. Psalm 103 verse 8 God is abounding in love. His love is abounding. His love is an all-compassing. You said, Jason, I have come and I am wracked with guilt. Oh, my God is a God of love. My God is a sweet God of love and mercy. And He will come and He will clean you and forgive you. You said, yeah, I messed up, I made big mistakes. My God's love is bigger than your mistakes. Vaster than your mistakes in His love. Greater than your mistakes. And He can cover your mistakes with His sweet love. Because at Calvary the Savior died for you. You said, Jason, I can't lift my head. I'm so full of guilt, I'm so ashamed. Oh, my friend, turn to Christ and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, save me. Lord, forgive me, and He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will wash you, and He will give you a new life. And someone said, Jay, I feel as if I'm on the edge. I'm on the edge of society. And, Lord, Jay, I, I don't think anyone wants to know me. I don't think anybody cares about me. I, I don't think I could ever be accepted by God. Who am I to be accepted? He, he does not want me, Jay. He came especially for you. The Saviour came especially for you. You're the one that He wanted. You're the one that He died for. He gave His life for all and He gave it for you. He says, for God so loved the world. Are you in the world? And he loved you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whoever believes on him shall not perish but have eternal life. And maybe some of you want to commit suicide. Some of you young people can't see a future and you can't see a way forward in your life. And for God loved you, he died on the cross for you, and you can have a purpose, you can have a meaning. You can have a purpose and a meaning. Maybe some of you are wrapped up with anger and hatred at God because you've seen suffering in your life. But you need to get rid of that bitterness and come to Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me and know his peace and joy. And know his mercy. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. Psalm 103 verse 8. My God is a God of love, but my God is a God of love, vast love, vast love, vast love, my friend. He's full of love, he's full of mercy, he's full of grace, full of patience, full of long-suffering, full of great, great love. So great is His love. So great is His love for you. 
so patient, so kind, so tender, so long-suffering. And so if you come and you say, Jay, I, I, he can't forgive me. He can and he will. He said, Jay, I can't. I keep failing. I keep struggling. God will come and he'll show you his mercy and his love and his kindness. There will be a day of joy in your heart and a day of hope in your heart. Whatever that will be, whether you're pulled down by heroin or whether you've lived as a prostitute or whether you've been a good person but deep down you realize that perhaps you need grace and the forgiveness of God. And you didn't understand that you say by grace, not by works. Whatever it is, whatever it is, he will forgive. If you come and say, Lord, forgive me. Never, never anybody who hears this, never anybody who hears this. May you never, ever, ever think that you can never know forgiveness. Never walk away from me. Never ever walk away from me and feel that you are never wanted. Never walk away from me and say, Jay, God doesn't want me. I'm not the one he wants. Or Jay, I can never be forgiven. Because you can. God loves you and he gave his life for you. And he wants you to be forgiven. He wants you to know his joy. He wants you to know his strength. He wants you to have a new day, a new hope. <laughs> he wants you and never forget it Jesus came and he sat with tax collectors and tax collectors were hated in their day but Jesus sat with them Jesus sat with the prostitutes and he sat with the lepers remember the lepers you got leprosy and if you went to the lepers you would catch leprosy and Jesus went to the lepers and you might feel you're a, a leper today I'll tell you this Jesus wants to sit with you the master wants to sit with you. The master sits with you and he gives you an open table and he invites you into his presence. You know, some of you might say, well, Jay, I haven't got a job. Or, Jay, I, I haven't got no money. I, I haven't got all the status that my friends have or whatever. Jesus sits with you. He loves you and he has a plan for you and a purpose for you. And he wants to guide you and he wants to give you hope and a new day. But you've got to seek the love of God and the gospel of salvation and seek him now. And that's what he wants for you, folks. Sorry about this. <coughs> but when the kindness and the love of God, our Saviour, appeared, He saved us. Not because of the righteous things we have done. But because of His mercy, He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Saviour so that having been justified by His grace we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. But even when the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared I'm sorry for preaching so passionately but I just believe it and the kindness and the goodness of God came in the Saviour. There was a, a story of a 17th century guy and he'd been condemned to go to prison and get and, and his life to be taken away <coughs> to be hanged and it was on the day he was going to get hanged but a, 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 a some uh, his friend had gone to the king and got a, a, a pardon for him and he he rode on the horse and he got to the guy he said leave this guy alone don't you can't you can't hang him here I have a pardon and he had the piece of paper with the pardon on you're not going to get hanged on judgment day you've got a pardon in Jesus Christ but you need to believe in him to get that pardon to get that forgiveness we're going to turn to Luke chapter 15 
and we're going to just read a, a passage Luke 15 verse 11 to 31 <clears throat> Then he said a certain man had two sons The younger of them said to his father Father give me the portion of goods that falls to me So divided them to his livelihood And not many days after the younger son gathered all together Journeyed to a far country And there wasted his possessions with the prodigal living But when he had spent all there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf where he killed it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and began to be merry. In merry. Now his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house he heard music and dancing. So he called one of his servants and asked these things meant, asked what these things meant. He said to him, Your brother has come, because he has received him safe and sound. Your father has killed the fatty calf, but he was hungry, angry, and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you, I have never transgressed your commandments at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, he was devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatty calf for him. He said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we would, should make merry and be glad. But your brother was dead and is alive again, was and was lost and is found. That's the masterful parable of the Lord Jesus Christ. The parable of the prodigal son. A son who said to the father, give me all that I want. And he went with his inheritance and he went off. He spent it on riotous living. He came to an end in himself and realized how foolish he was. And he went back to his father. His father didn't condemn him, but his father ran up to him, gave him a hug, and gave him a, a, a ring on his finger, and gave him a, a, uh, a cloak, and killed the fatty car. And, and that's a picture of, of you. You go your own way, you live a, a life for yourself, you come a cropper and you realise how foolish you've been. You go to the Father, God, and expect God to punish you, but he doesn't punish you. He runs to you and he gives you a hug. He puts a ring on your finger, making you a son. He puts a cloak round you, Jesus Christ the Saviour, who died on the cross for you. And he kills the fatted calf. He gives you a feast of joy and peace and hope and future. Why? Because at the cross, the Saviour died for you. It was your substitute for your sin. And if you believe in that, you can know peace and joy and a banquet now and a banquet in heaven of real peace and forgiveness. Ephesians 2, 8 For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, this not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. You're saved by grace. Grace means undeserved mercy. You didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. But in your undeserved mercy, in his, in your, because you didn't deserve it, and I didn't deserve it, Jesus died for you. You didn't deserve that, I didn't deserve it, but he died for you. And the Father offers you that gift, 
but it's for you now to take that gift to claim it and say Lord I, I, I believe and no one can have an excuse even the person who feels the most unworthiest the most sinful Paul said I am the chief of sinners and he was a murderer even he could find forgiveness and you can find forgiveness today one writer says to put it in simple terms grace is God's free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ faith is receiving the gift faith is a belief in God and, 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 and receives the salvation but the salvation is Jesus and God raised up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in the kindness to us in Christ Jesus this is rich grace folks it's rich and you become rich today if you believe in Jesus imagine the Queen invites you to the house a house for a meal well God has invited you to eternity he's invited you will you come come as you are you don't have to pay come as you are you don't have to be rich come as you are you don't have to put a suit on come as you are who you are today come and believe in Jesus Christ the Savior says this to you as his parting words to you the Divine Son of God gives you these words to you for you today come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy my burden is light Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 to 30 for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and not through yourselves it is the gift of God will you do that today I'm going to say a prayer and as I say the prayer you can say it in your own heart as a commitment to God and if you have given your heart to the Lord please let me know okay dear Lord I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and that I was under the wrath of you yourself I acknowledge I was blinded by Satan but Lord I acknowledge you've opened my eyes to see the truth of the gospel that you are my Savior who died for me at the cross and Lord I know that I, I, I feel unworthy but I know that if I come truly and repent and say sorry and ask for your forgiveness that you will truly cleanse me and Lord I ask that you forgive me and I ask that you will be my Savior today and I hand my life over to you every square inch of it is yours and I live for you Lord because I know that you are the grace of God I ask that you will come into my life by the power of your Holy Spirit and be my Saviour and Lord today Amen I prayed that prayer and the prayer doesn't save you your prayer doesn't save you but it's an indication of what you mean in your heart and if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that he died for you that he rose again and that you can only be saved by his sacrifice on the cross if you believe that then today you are a child of God and you've been born again and you're his for now and forever okay so let me know if you've been saved if you got saved today and if you have and you need encouragement let me know and I'll try and encourage you and uh, try and find a church for you in your area or point you to things that will encourage you all the stuff on this channel of Athanasius TV is top stuff that will encourage you in your walk with Jesus and it is quality quality Christian material and it will encourage you and the links on the channel will bring you to people and ministries that will encourage you 
Okay. Thank you for listening and take care. God bless.